Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. Hello everybody, welcome back. Today's video is one that I am very excited about because it is a collaboration with one of my favorite topics and with one of my favorite booktubers. So today's video is a collaboration with Christy and I will have her channel linked down below and her video linked down below too. And we decided that we would do a video together since we both love historical romance about our top five favorite heroes and heroines in historical romance. So this was a lot of fun to put together. I do definitely have uh, some heavy hitters on my list, but I'm going to hopefully tell you why they are so special to me and why I love them so much. So let's go ahead and get into it. So we're going to talk about the heroes first, obviously. So my number one hero, my main man, my number one historical romance hero of all time. Can you guess? You probably can. Derek Craven from Lisa Kleypas, Dreaming of You. Listen, I understand the hype of Sebastian St. Vincent. I truly do. But Derek Craven will always have my heart. Top number one spot forever and always. I don't ever see him being unseated. He is that perfect, that special to me. So this hero, this the book, the basic premise of this book is we have our hero who came from nothing, basically. He came from really tragic circumstances and he worked and pulled himself up by the bootstraps to build this gigantic kingdom of wealth in this gambling hell, basically. And our heroine, Sarah, who also is an excellent heroine, I did not put her on this on my favorite heroines list only because I didn't want to just be talking about the same five books for both of them, but she's a fantastic heroine too. So that goes without saying that I can't, I can't include every fantastic hero and heroine. So I know I'm missing some. I decided to go with the ones that stuck in my heart the most. So anyway, Sarah is our heroine. She is a writer and she is working on her new novel and she needs to do some research into gambling in the seedier side of London. So she goes to this gambling hell completely unaccompanied and hoping to meet Derek and talk to him and interview him. And wouldn't you know it, she actually ends up saving his life. She just happens to have a pistol in her bootstraps or gown or wherever, and she shoots this man who is attacking Derek and saves his life. And that's their initial meeting. So you can imagine the impact that this has on Derek Craven, who is used to a very certain type of woman. He's not used to a lady such as Sarah, and he's certainly not used to a ballsy woman like her. And one of the things I dearly love about Derek is the way that he loves Sarah for who she is, for her attributes, for her qualities that go so far beyond her physical beauty. I think this is a really good example of a hero seeing beyond the outer shell and really falling for the woman that's inside. Now, Derek, of course, is a sad little angst puppy and he is uh, dealing with some stuff and he feels that he's not worthy of love. And so he fights these feelings for her throughout the entire book, continuously just fighting, struggling, will not admit that he loves her, will not admit that he's even capable of love. So again, watching him completely unravel and try to be this better man because of the love he has for her just sends me into a different stratosphere. I just love it so much. That's something that I think Sarah does, or not Sarah, Lisa does particularly well with her heroes, is she really showcases how they are affected by the transformative power of love and how that can change people for the better. That's a theme that I love dearly in romance novels. I do not care what anybody says. I believe in that power. I think it's incredible and I do love it. Obviously, abuse is a different situation, but we're going to be in fantasy land here and we're going to talk about the redemptive power of love because that is what Derek Craven does exactly. There are moments in this book that show how much he loves and pines for her. There is a beautiful rescue scene that literally had my heart all aflutter where he goes and saves her. He saves the heroine with a cape on a horse and I'm just like, I can't even handle it. And then let's not forget the par part where Derek Craven keeps her eyeglasses and holds them, touches them in his pocket when he thinks about her. I can't. I can't even deal with it. So many just beautiful romantic gestures in here. Some of them cliche. I don't even care. I think it's beautiful. I think it's so beautiful. I love the way he loves her. He is my leading man forever and ever. Okay, next on this list is a Sarah McLean hero. And honestly, I feel like so many Sarah McLean heroes would fit on this list because I just love how she writes her men. I love how she writes them to be completely goners over the moon, out of their minds, in love with the woman, will literally do everything, burn down the world, but also honor her agency in the best possible way. 
Oh my gosh, I love it. This is the perfect type of man, right? He is never going to cage her or force her to be something that she doesn't want to be or that she isn't. He's going to accept and love her for who she is, give her wings to fly. It's just a beautiful thing. But also, he's going to slit some throats if he has to if she's in danger. So, this man. I decided to go with Cross from One Good Earl Deserves a Lover because the undoing, the undoing of this very stoic, very passionate man that keeps this shell just to perfection, the way that he keeps his leash so taut and does not allow himself to, don't mind me, I forgot to put my truck in park, that does not allow himself to just unleash his passions with Pippa just until, until, until he finally does a thing of beauty, a thing of beauty. The way he respects Pippa, the way he cares for her, the way that he gradually falls in love with her, this brainy woman who loves to study about insects and loves to just study books and gain knowledge and comes to him with this proposition of, could you please ruin me so I can know what pleasure is about before I get married? Because I don't think this guy is going to be able to do it. And he's like, excuse me, what now? Um, I want to, but I don't know if I should. And so, like, I just love that moral battle that he has, and I love the way he treats her. I love how sensual this book is. The chair scene, the chair scene, the chair scene in this book lives in my head rent free. It's so beautiful, so steamy, so seductive. Oh my gosh, this man, this man. Okay, next, next is the incomparable, perfect probably number two on this list. He should have been num number two. Really, these aren't in order other than Derek, but this is my second favorite hero of all time, and it is Galen from Indigo by Beverly Jenkins. Listen. <sighs> Listen. I just, I just can't even form words about Galen in Indigo because he so passionately but so tenderly loves Hester, and the way that he takes care of her and the little gestures buying her the vanilla perfume it literally makes me want to weep the way this man loves her loves her for who she is the way he gives her a nickname of indigo because her palms are stained from the indigo fields where she worked when she was a slave and how he finds that endearing and beautiful and all of the attributes about her that make her who she is. He loves every single one of those, and he expresses that to her in the most beautiful way I have ever read about. The man is just a seductive, romantic, perfect hero. Perfect. 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 I will hear no, no complaints about Galen. Absolutely none. I don't know that anybody would even complain about him, because he is literally the perfect hero. There are so many mo moments in this book that are just swoony. He's so determined to win her over the nursing back to health scene when, you know, he's the Black Daniel in this book. This is all about, like, Underground Railroad and helping slaves to get freedom. And she is the one who is nursing him back to health, and that's when he falls in love with her. <sighs> and he never gives up on her. He never gives up on her, even though she keeps her heart so closed off and she's so afraid to love. He never gives up on her. It's so beautiful. Okay, next on my list is another Lisa Claypus hero. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay? She's going to show up again later on. I love Lisa Claypus. She's my favorite historical romance author. I just, I just adore her. So this man is Tom Severin from Chasing Cassandra. Y'all knew, y'all knew I was going to mention Tom, right? Because if you have not experienced this book and you like historical romance even a little bit, you need to read it. You need to read it just for Tom Severin because this man who, again, is one of those self-made heroes, very wealthy, very rich. He's kind of come to the point in his life where he's, like, got all this money. He's got all of his financial and career dreams, and he's a little bit unfulfilled. But he doesn't recognize that, that the thing that is leaving him unfulfilled is that he doesn't have the love of a good woman. But then he sees Cassandra, our beautiful plus-size heroine, our sweet, charming plus-size heroine, who is determined to only marry for love, he sees her, and he is like, I want her. She is beautiful. She is luscious. I want her. And at first, it's definitely just a physical thing. He just wants to own her body. But, but, undoubtedly, this man falls head over heels in love for her. And it was just a beautiful thing to see. The way that he continuously sort of had this internal battle of being so, at times, socially awkward and unaware of things and not really sure how he feels or if he could feel. And then just the amount of love that he has for Cassandra that he's, like, unaware of for so long. 
and the grand gesture, the grand gesture in this book, the grand gesture this man does, probably one of the best grand gestures I've ever read about in my life. One of. But man, this book is just romantic from first page to last page. It's romantic. It's beautiful. There's so much about this book, again, where we're just watching him love the heroine for who she is right in this moment, loves everything about her, doesn't want her to change, wants her to be his so badly, <sighs> wants to save her, wants to save her reputation, wants to protect her, wants to take care of her. He's just a perfect hero, okay? He's just perfect. And the last on my top five heroes is, you know, I had to pick a Joanna Shoup hero. I had to, because even though that woman loves her a-hole heroes, I still like them. I still like them. But she also does what I think is a very perfect alpha mellow hero, where we have this man, the book I'm talking about, by the way, is The Devil of Downtown, where we have this man who is alpha in every sense of the way. Like, we've got the kingpin of crime. We've got a gentleman gangster hero in this book. This is who this man is, Jack Mulligan. The gentleman gangster, kingpin of crime, head of the biggest gambling hell in New York, right? He is the man of crime. He is ruthless. He will do whatever it takes to fulfill his business, but he does have this also, like, strange sense of honor as he goes about that, and that appeals to me because I like a man who can be ruthless and cutthroat, but also has a line. Like, in, and his line is very specifically, he will never, ever, ever do anything against women or children. And, like, who doesn't love that, right? So, in this book, he, that's who he is. He's, he's very hard. He's not gonna love anybody, you know, he's just this big, hard, cold alpha man. And, uh, of course, our heroine, Justine, the do-gooder, comes to ask for his help because one of her missions is to help women and children who have been abandoned or abused by the men in their lives. And they don't either have finances or they're trying to heal and recover. So she goes to Jack and says, hey, this deadbeat man left this woman and he works for you. I need you to fix it. I need you to make him pay her because she's destitute now. And he is charmed by Justine's do-gooderness, but also he wants to do the right thing, but he also resists this a little bit. So I think this is the closest mafia book I've ever read, closest to mafia in a historical setting. And this man is my favorite Joanna Shoup hero, without a doubt. I would literally do just about anything for Jack Mulligan. I think he is perfect. <laughs> he is a perfect hero. I just love that blend of ruthless man who has honor and how that extends to Justine and the very, again, the gradual slight descent into love for her. He'll do anything for her. Oh my gosh, I love this hero so much. This is such a great historical romance. And I I think that the only downfall to this is that I think he needed a bit of a stronger heroine. But I mean, like, you know, I didn't, I didn't love the heroine in here. But man, did I love Jack. He was fantastic. Okay, moving on to heroines. The number one heroine. Number one. This is my number one heroine. Can you guess? I think if you've watched my videos for a while, you probably know who this is. It is Jessica Trent from Lord of Scoundrels. Look, took me a few times to get into this book. It really did. But once I got into it, when I got to the scene where this woman literally takes her future into her own hands at a time when that was absolutely not possible for women, and she does something that I was not expecting. I don't want to spoil it because I didn't get spoiled. And when I got to that scene, I was literally like, oh, she did not. She did. She went there. It was a beautiful thing to behold. I loved it so freaking much. I read that and immediately I made an I heart Jessica Trent badge because I'm like, I just, I just am the, have the biggest girl crush on this woman. She is a bad A character. She literally is unafraid of anything. The premise of this book is her trying to save her little brother who is such a dummy from the man who she ends up falling in love with. I love how protective she is. I love how strong she is. I love how stalwart she is. I just adore her in every way. She's perfection. This is the best enemies to lovers historical romance I've ever read in my life. I think it's fantastic and I think y'all should read it. If you haven't already, this is like classic historical romance and it's a classic for a good reason. And again, like if you have anything negative to say about Jessica Trent, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. 
Okay, the next heroine that I dearly love is Serafina from the Raycast. So, Serafina is a much different heroine from Jessica Trent. She's much different from a lot of the characters that I've mentioned so far. She is a woman who started her life very naive, was determined to marry for love, trusted a man, let him ruin her, and then the rest of her life is spent trying to seek justice for this man who so callously abused, used her, and left her as damaged goods. His actions affected her life indefinitely, and she is doing the best that she can to live a life and to find a way to bring equality to women. So this is a deeply feminist book, but it is feminist in the actions of the characters. There is no picket line marching, there is no pamphlet handing out. This is a book of a woman who is feeling the effects of a patriarchal society, how it has damaged her life, and the empathy that she has for other women who have likewise been affected. She writes her memoirs trying to get the word out about this man. She is a public speaker, and she's also the victim of a lot of hate in the society, as you can imagine. But she is so full of passion. She definitely is a bit of a self-sabotaging character in that she numbs her pain through sex, drinking, things that are not good for her. She knows they're not good for her. She knows that she's not happy. She knows she's still bearing the scars of what happened to her in her younger years, but she's doing her darndest to make a life for herself and to live the best that she can despite all of the trauma and the abuse that she has faced. And I just admire her so much for that. I love her. I love her because of her flaws. I love her because of her desire to help other women. I love her for how tenderly she loves the hero in this book, who is a single dad, a widow, and just falls for her immediately and was so tender and sweet and loving with her. And she struggles with wanting to trust him, to trust a man again, as you can imagine. And I just, I felt like this was such a realistic portrayal of a woman in this time who had been ruined and what would her life look like. Not only was she ruined, but everyone knew she was ruined. So what kind of a life does a woman have at that point when the one thing that men and society prize about you has been ripped away from you? How do you live? How do you provide for yourself? What do you do? So I think I had a lot of sympathy for her because of the situation she was in and how she dealt with it. And I just loved her inner strength, her flaws. I loved everything about her. Okay, this next one is a funner heroine. I think Serafina is probably the most melancholy in this bunch. So Hattie from Brazen and the Beast, a fan favorite, probably Sarah McLean's favorite heroine of all time, for good reason, a plus size heroine. She's the daughter of, I think, is it a shipping magnet? I'm not entirely sure what her dad's company is, but she is determined. She's on the eve of her 29th year. This is going to be the year of Hattie. She's going to go and seek her pleasure. She's going to lose her V-card. She's going to experience life and not let men have any say in that. And she's going to do that, assuming she's going to inherit and take the business from her father. So imagine her surprise. On the night she goes out to find her pleasure, she sees this big, beautiful man in her carriage tied up. What is a girl to do, right? It's so charming, so funny. I just love how strong this woman is. I love how she is so ready and willing to just take her life into her own hands and do what she wants to do that's going to bring her joy. Again, obviously, this is the type of book that is bucking those conventions. I think the Ray Kess is a much more realistic version of what it would look like for a woman. This is a funner spin on that, not probably historically accurate, but a really fun, good time seeing a woman empowered at love for her body, wanted and desired for who she is, and not ashamed to find her pleasure and take happiness where she can find it. So this book is just so much fun, and it's so steamy and sexy, and it's just great caretaking scene in here. This big, beautiful man just out of his mind for her. It's a great time. I love Hattie so much. Okay, so now this next heroine is a Beverly Jenkins heroine, and it is Eddie from Forbidden. I love Eddie so much. This was the first Beverly Jenkins book that I read, and I was instantly charmed by the whole book, by the setting, by how cozy it was, by the hero. But specifically, Eddie really won me over because she is such a quietly strong woman, as I think so many of Beverly Jenkins' heroines are. 
they have so much strength that feels like it's very untapped strength that just lies beneath the surface that isn't outwardly or visibly shown but when like the chips are all down when bad times happen this is the type of woman who is literally going to pull all the pieces together without tears without anger she is going to make sure stuff gets done and she's going to rise up every single time that she is knocked down she is an incredible heroine I love her so much. The book starts out with her wanting to move to open her own like restaurant. She wants to be a cook. She's an excellent cook. And she ends up falling victim to some men who want to abuse her. And she's saved by the hero. Of course she is, who is also a wonderful man. And he nurses her back to health, which we love a good caretaking scene. We love it forever and ever. And she is charmed by him, but she's also a little bit hesitant to trust. She wants to be strong and dependent on her own. She's learned throughout her life that she needs to be that way. And so she, she is definitely hesitant to really let him in. However, she eventually does. It's a thing of beauty. And I just loved, loved, loved watching this woman who is so incredibly strong but is not an outwardly type of strong heroine, but has this inner fire and strength that cannot ever be dimmed despite everything that happens to her. It's just one of my favorite types of heroines of all time. And I think Beverly Jenkins writes her perfectly in here and I love her so, so much. Okay, so now the last book, the last heroine on my list is Evie from Devil in Winter. So Evie, her character arc in Devil in Winter is one of the most satisfying and surprising character arcs that I have ever read, but truthfully you don't get to see the impact of that if you haven't read the previous books in the series, so I think you definitely need to read this series in order, the Wallflower series, you gotta read it in order to get the full impact of not only Evie, but St. Vincent's character as well. But man, do I love Evie. She is just this... In the previous books, she seems so meek, so quiet, just like someone who pe will let people walk all over her, who's not going to stand up and make her own decisions, and some of that is because of her history and what's happened with her family, but a lot of that is just, you know, she also has a stutter, she's very self-conscious of it, and she seems to be the type of woman who is going to be easy to take advantage of. But in this book, we see her, again, take her future into her own hands, try to convince keep get this duke to marry her to marry her saint vincent he can she convinces him to marry her she saves the day basically of her friend you know and not only that but she commits this duke to celibacy for three months before she's even gonna allow him in her bed and the rake of all rakes sebastian saint vincent like is he really gonna do that he does like, she has him wrapped around her little finger, and it's so beautiful. I just love, I love this fiery, passionate woman. And in later books, in the Ravenels, we see how tender and kind and cons considerate she is for her family. But I can't even tell you how much I enjoyed her character arc. I thought it was fantastic. I loved seeing this woman so unexpectedly take things into her own hands and not at all be deterred by men in her life or her circumstances. Like, she was going to make a go of it, and she was going to do whatever it took to get it. So I love her so much. All right. There you have it. Those are my top five heroes and heroines of historical romance. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have made it this far, please feel free to leave me an apple. I don't know. An apple emoji or maybe just a flower. An apple or a flower. One of those. And I'll see you all in my next video.